Good morning, and welcome to the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you are with us on Zoom, please remain muted during Mass, except when we exchange peace with one another. We will pray aloud together the last prayer of intercession. When it appears on the screen, please join in. The spirit of reconciliation grows out of compassionate and merciful hearts. Christ's redemption engages us. As Christians, we are called to deny the way of vengeance and embrace the way of forgiveness. This call applies to social issues as well as personal relationships. How can we as the church help reconcile systemic conflicts in our world? So please stand and join in our opening song. sound checks are good. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you all with one heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, so to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, so to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving. All my being, bless the 
Lord. Bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. God forgives us all our sins, healing those who live in pain, saving us from final death that fills us with goodness and love. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, rich in love. God remembers not our sins, forgiving and loving is God. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord. <coughs> for this is why Christ died and came to life that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That's why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed a huge amount. Now he had no way of paying it back. His master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to, to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. 
but he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back his debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? And then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from the heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, last week we heard Jesus give his apostles instructions about what to do when someone sins against you and how we deal with it individually at first, and then if needed, we involve two or three witnesses. And finally, as a last resort, we go to the church if there's no repentance. And today in that context, Peter is asking how often he needs to forgive. And clearly he thinks that seven times is a very merciful number of times to forgive. And maybe that's because seven in the Old Testament is the number of perfection. And really seven is a lot of times to forgive, but Jesus takes forgiveness way more seriously than that. And so he says to forgive 77 times. Now some Bible translations say 77 times, but others say 70 times seven. And the truth is that whether Jesus said 77 times or 490, that is a lot of forgiving. And in either case, Jesus is telling Peter that seven times simply will not cut it, that forgiveness must be granted again and again and again and again to the point that you cannot calculate the number. And really he means it as a shockingly large number of times. And what Jesus really means is to always forgive. And it's then that he, he goes on to tell the parable of the unforgiving servant. Now we just heard that the servant owed the king a large amount. And that's true as far as it goes. But as the gospel was originally written, Matthew tells us that that servant owed 10,000 talents. Now talents were gold coins that were worth an awful lot, about six thousand days worth of wages. When I looked this up, not on Google, one talent was worth 6,000 days wages or one denarius per day. And our servant owes 10,000 talents. That's a ridiculous amount of money. And Jesus intended it to be understood that way. Now you're gonna appreciate this, 10,000 talents at the working rate of one denarius per day would take 160,000 years to pay back. And that's not taking any time off for weekends or holidays. <laughs> now for perspective, consider that Jesus told this parable about 2000 years ago. The servant would be working his debt off and has got way more than 150,000 years left to go. He's barely made a dent in that obligation. In other words, it's an unbelievably large amount of debt and he'll never ever be able to pay it back. But in any event, he asked the king for patience in paying off that debt. And so what did the king do? Well, he forgave him all that debt. He wiped the slate clean and wrote off 160,000 years of work to repay it. Now today, today that debt would be something like many, many billions and billions of dollars. That's a lot of debt and just like that, it's forgiven. And to celebrate his good fortune in being forgiven of that debt, he goes and finds a fellow servant who owes him some money and he forgives that other servant's debt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He finds that other servant who owes him 100 denarii, about 100 days wages, 100 days of work, 
Not a small amount, but nowhere near the 10,000 talents he himself recently owed. And so he takes him by the throat and he demands immediate payment. But that fellow servant begs for mercy, just like he himself had done with the king. And the wicked servant refuses to forgive that debt and has that poor other guy thrown into debtor's prison, even though he himself had received an incredible amount of mercy for a much, much, much larger debt. And so the, the king, who had shown the wicked servant an incredible and extravagant and exorbitant kind of mercy, got wind of what had happened. And well, he became angry and took severe measures to ensure that the unforgiving servant would now pay him back. Well, the point of that parable is in the last line where Jesus warns us that forgiveness is ours from God and as much of it as we can take or need, but also that we should take care to match what forgiveness we receive to those who ask that we forgive them. In fact, that's part of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And really, this is not so much a lesson in economics. Jesus is actually showing us and telling us that God, who is the source of all mercy and love, is extravagant and unprecedented in his love and mercy to us. God requires that when we receive his mercy and forgiveness, we in turn must show mercy to our fellow human beings. In other words, we're supposed to give to others as we have received from God. And Jesus wants us to follow his example to, to forgive others when forgiveness is asked of us, just as God forgives us when we ask to be forgiven. Now the parable seems to suggest that that God does not ask us to work for the mercy that we need. In other words, the forgiveness that God gives us when we sin is not a response to any efforts that we make, and we can't earn it because it's freely given to us. So Jesus is speaking of a God who gives generously, lavishly, to those who have nothing at all to offer, and he gives it to us for the asking. But we're also called to imitate God in our forgiveness of others. Jesus shows us that God's readiness to forgive those who ask for it is limitless, but our readiness to forgive should also be limitless. Somewhere else in Matthew's gospel, Jesus told his disciples to be perfect as our heavenly father is perfect. And today he's here showing how that can be done. We're to be as merciful to, as God is merciful, as forgiving as God is forgiving. I don't know if you remember this, but in uh, 2015, Pope Francis called for a year of mercy. And in calling for that, he said something quite profound and special about this very parable that we just heard. And this is what he said. We are called to show mercy because mercy has first been shown to us. For us Christians, it's a requirement from which we are not allowed to excuse ourselves. And at, at times, how hard it seems to forgive. And yet pardon is the instrument placed into our fragile hands to attain serenity of heart, to let go of anger and wrath and violence and revenge are necessary conditions to living joyfully. Well, for Pope Francis, we must show forgiveness as Christians. And we have that obligation because God has already shown mercy to us through Jesus Christ. Through our own sin, we've built a debt that we cannot possibly pay or work off. Because of sin, on our own, we have no way of bridging the gap between us and God. But God, whose mercy is infinite, can pay off our debts no, no matter how big they are because his love literally covers an infinite variety and number of sins. 
The unforgiving servant in our parable is angry and he chokes the other servant because for whatever reason, he has not imitated God's mercy. Had he begun to imitate God's mercy and passed it along to others, he would have experienced joy and happiness. Instead, he remains tied to his own sin and anger. Well, Pope Francis shows a way out of that cycle. If we desire to have joyful lives, we have to exercise mercy to our neighbors, to show mercy to those who have hurt us, and to be merciful to those who sin against us. And in that way, we begin to be perfect, just like God. Let us stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And mindful of the mercy we have received, we ask God's mercy on the church and on the world. Our response is, merciful God, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear our prayer. That the church serve as a beacon of reconciliation, leading others in the ways of harmony and peace. We pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer that nations locked in disagreement break the ancient bond of hatred and seek healing. We pray. Merciful, Merciful God, hear our prayer. That global conservation efforts be strengthened, empowering people to combat the climate crisis. We pray. Merciful, Merciful God, God, hear our prayer. For all the people of Northern Africa, especially those affected by the earthquake in Morocco and the floods in Libya, that they receive the care, comfort, and resources they need. We pray. That all those who are burdened by the weight of resentments find solace in today's lesson of compassion and forgiveness. We pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. That we mirror God's mercy in the ways we care for one another, especially those who have requested our prayers as listed in the bulletin and in our book of prayer. We pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For continued fulfillment in Christ Jesus, in the Eucharist we share and in this community we cherish, we pray, merciful God, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, receive our prayers that we may be strengthened to proclaim your word to all we meet today and always. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our brother, amen. amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world, and in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to these gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this Forgive us as we forgive others, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, everyone. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof.
springtime to fall. The wine flows in Christ we recall. The sharing of our lives with one and all. Many and great are pebbles in the sand. The sun. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Please pick up a bulletin on your way out and stay up to date on all the parish news. And also pick up a copy of the kids bulletin, which is also in the entryway. The deadline for signing up for baptism or first communion is today. You will find registration forms in the entryway. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz the patron saint of the Philippines. We hope you will join us for a Filipino cultural mass with readings and songs in Tagalog, followed by terrific Filipino food in the commons, which is the next building. Coffee and donuts today. Please join us after mass in the commons. And today after mass, immediately, there is an altar server training and all youth who want to be altar servers, 
Please stay after Mass for this training, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Hi, I want to say a word of thanks for our parish barbecue last weekend. Thank you for those of you who came and enjoyed the music and the fun and the sharing. Thank you for bringing food to share and desserts. Thank you so much for all the people that helped. Uh, and that goes from people setting up, people grilling the food, um, Jane and friends who put together the cakewalk and some gifts and raffle prizes. Thank you so much. Um, those who cleaned up afterwards and those who made sure that um, the food got from the grill to the table so everyone could get their hamburger or hot dog and those who filled up and also those who prepped the food and getting ready for it. Thank you so much. It was a really great success and we had a wonderful time. I thought maybe you had an announcement too. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Peace to San Lorenzo Ruiz. Lots of good food. <laughs>